I hate the way business is done the, as much as I hate, um, you know, Trump going to have a rally in Tulsa. Knowing what Tulsa means to African-American people, what happened there, and just being so blatant and overt with this racism. Because I'm not a political guy. I don't tell people who to vote for. But this guy has, like, such hate in his heart. You he can't, he can't not say something. It's like, Jesus Christ, buddy. I get it. You're conservative. I get it. You know, you're into the religious thing. I get it. I'm not into that, but I respect that. But this here, especially with what's happening, just watching that guy. And those people sleep at night. Then, Still those, pillowcases, Bert. Those of you not listening, this is how much Bert Kreischer has been listening and learning over this last week. In 1921, it was the Tulsa, home, Tulsa Massacre. There is a little town just south of the tracks. Um, and a shoeshine boy tripped in an, in an elevator and landed on a white girl. And she hit him with his purse, broke her purse strap. She went to the cops. They came and got him the next day when he was hanging out with his friends. And it was a massacre of black people. They went through this town. Uh, in it was just, also because they were doing really well and people were jealous. Yeah. They had their own was, shit going on. They're and, doctors and, and, and lawyers all on this one street. And, and I bet uh, that shit in the elevator never fucking happened the way that lady said it happened. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and dude, so, to have uh, the standing president deliberately go there to inflame that is just it's uh i don't even know i don't even know i mean i fucking put it in words How, and so, i'm just amazed i am so fucking amazed like when i'm just watching politicians my whole life any little thing could take them down because they i think because they believed it could take him down and he's just like that's fucking guy the shit that this guy's doing um, when it, just when it comes to that stuff, all of that other stuff, international trade, I don't understand any of that. But just as far as like, you Here's know, what I don't understand. common decency as a fucking human being. I, 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 I hate bullies and I, I can't. I don't like bullies. I don't like bullies at all. I yeah. think that's what really bothered me about. That's what bothers me when, when you look at uh, any of these Karen videos that you see, you know, the Karen videos, Karen's Gone Wild. And it's white, white, women women. Are, white women are all coming out going, just for the record, I have a friend, Karen, and she's really nice. Like, they are so concerned about their friend's name, Karen, rather than, it's like, it's not a, that's just a, a, a name. It's what <laughs> white women are doing, and you're a white woman, and, you're, and your focus in this is, is the white woman named Karen. Karen's our N-word. <laughs> I, yeah, it's just fucking, it's, it's fucking hilarious. And I, I, I just, you know, the misogynistic side of me that I <laughs> <laughs> is enjoying the shit out of watching white women. And I'm just, let me watch how they try to manipulate their fucking way out of this. It's, it, dude, There's it, another Karen that I know. One time. <laughs> <laughs> just shut question. up and take your fucking medicine. <laughs> Here's my can, question. Bert, can they ever just say, you know what? You're right. No. We need to work on that. Did they ever say that? No. <laughs> Can you ever say it enough as a guy? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Dude, I've spent this entire, probably full year, 18 months, ever since Me Too started, and I heard people were upset. I have been one listening motherfucker. I, I don't tweet anything. I never talk, talk po politically ever really anyway. But, like, I'm curious – because, like, I, I never heard about the Tulsa Massacre. I never heard about it in my life, right? Heard about it the other day. And Dude, then I there went, are wow. so many fucking racial massacres and employment massacres that have happened in this country. Dude, this one in Pittsburgh, I did, I did a gig in Pittsburgh where the hotel was. This was before unions were going on, and all the people down the factory wanted to get paid and not have child labor and all of this shit. And they sent a militia down there and they just were cracking skulls and they just killed a bunch of people. Just uh -huh. came down and just fucking shot them. And that was white people on white people. So if, they, if white people would do that to white people, you can imagine what would go down and in the complete lack of being prosecuted. I mean, that shit was going on right up until like the, uh, as far as like, what, what's that horrific one? Um, where the, the, the three fucking white guys were sitting there, they, they either blew up the church, you can't even keep track of them, or, or, or killed some, some African-American people. And they were sitting there with smirks on their face during the trial. Like, it's like, how do you, like, you killed somebody. Dude. 
you killed somebody and you're sitting there with a fucking smirk on your face like that goes beyond like uh i mean i've seen serial killers on trial and at least they had they just they have like devoid of emotion and they're like you know crazy but to like be totally like this is how fucked up racism is that someone could be like a loving father and all but i mean you saw that with like the nazis they they remember seeing this thing this guy would be like right on the other side of his fucking wall they were put, they were putting people in ovens and he he's, he's on the other side you know oh, another day at work takes off his ss thing he's playing fucking t-ball in the backyard and the smell of what they're doing is coming over i'm telling you dude, the, the capabilities of evil of human beings is as uh is scary here's what i say though i've, I've said this don't ever underestimate your capability of being a bad person. Because when rage fills you, when rage hits you, and it, your ears get light, and your heart starts racing, and there's only one fix for that, and you're like, I got to light a motherfucker up. Because I got videotaped. I got videotaped. <laughs> you're going full on Tampa right now. I love it. Dude, I, got, I was with the girls. We're walking the dogs, and I have my, my bandana around my neck. I don't have it over my face. So I just have it around my neck, right? Girls have their face masks on, and a woman is either I'm I, I have not seen the video yet, so she is either FaceTiming someone else or she is simply recording me. And she just puts her phone in my face from the other side of the street, walking the other direction, and goes, Look at it, another one, no mask, no mask. And it's like right on my neck. Whoo! I lit that bitch up, called her a cunt, and fucking all of a sudden, and I'm like, but you're just like, yeah. you're like, it, it's it's just weird when someone videotapes you. It's a, it is a fucking flex. It is like, uh, it is like, go ahead, be an asshole. And then I go, listen, I have it. And then you want to say, you know what you should do in that scenario is go, uh, you're right. I'm, I'm going to put it on now, but there's a weird thing. No, but it's, if nobody is within six feet of you, what is the fucking problem? That's what I said. That's what I said. Somewhere I, I, in all those, that blitzkrieg of cunts. You, I imagine you said that. No, I said, I said, uh, we're pretty far away. And she goes, doesn't matter, mass outside, even if you're exercising. And I go, I'm not fucking exercising. I'm walking my dogs, you fucking cunt. And then she goes, oh, oh, got that on camera. And I was like, eh, okay. It's brand friendly. At That's least. another thing, too, is I, I, this whole thing of just people ratting everybody out and while they just think that they're the greatest person ever. Yep. Like that, that's one thing that, um, there's certain things that you need to rat out. Cunt is not, I mean, that's not a slur. No. It's just a fucking word. And, I, she, I am, and, you know, not for nothing, she's kind of being, yeah, she's being like a little fucking, there's another one. Like, you couldn't videotape her doing something, going, there's another one. Yeah. I, I, I was really kind of. Oh, you should have called her a Karen. Okay, I, Karen. Oh, Karen God is going to, will Karen finally unseed cunt? <laughs> cunt is like the Yankees in the 1950s. Nobody could beat him for like four or five years in a fucking row. Sure thing, when, Karen. When is 1955 Brooklyn Dodgers going to come in with Karen and finally beat him? Oh, my cunt was so under my breath that my daughters didn't even hear it. And she caught it, though. My, it was such a fucking cunt, like a fucking cunt. But uh, Karen would have been the home run. Here, I was blown away. I'm blown away about how many people tell people to go back to their own country. Like, who the fuck says that? I've never even thought that. Swear on my hand to a Bible. Never thought about, never thought about hitting a woman, and never thought about telling a person to go back to their own country. What a fucking weird thing to say to someone. You know they went to school with you just like that. Like that. What oh, the? That they, were, that they were born here. Yeah, you know they were born here. There were. There's a girl. Did you see the one Karen in the park? Uh, I, I couldn't see the girl's face really. I think she's Filipino, and she's just doing the thing on the step where you go like this, right, with your feet. She's uh -huh. working out. And the girl's like, go back to your own Asian country. Girl has no accent. I, like, there's, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not like she's cooking a fucking bat on these steps. Like, she's just putting her feet like this, right? And fucking, that is just blows me away that, that that is where that person's brain goes. Yeah, and they're also not, um, they're not acknowledging that everybody who came here helped build the place some without even getting paid <laughs> so you know listen we all say dumb shit yeah. but that's type of stuff i mean past a certain age i mean i i, I don't know I, I 
I, uh, I don't know. And I actually, you know, talking about this shit, I don't know that this actually helps anything because people either already agreed with what we're saying or they don't. Yeah. And I just wish there was a sort of a world where you could be like, say like what just happened to you, where you could actually sit down and be like, all right, why, were you, why did you feel like you had to be the mask Nazi? And Bert, why did you feel like, and what from your childhood made you immediately go to cunt rather than like, hey, you know, we're more than six feet away and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. You know, and it's just like, there, there is something annoying in general about somebody telling you what to do. Yeah. Yeah, there, I mean, I'll tell you personally, it, it, I'm, I don't like being given directions. I, I have a hard time, like, I couldn't work a job now. I think I've been on my own so much that someone couldn't go, hey, this is what I need from you. I'd be like, ah, I need to choose to do that or I'm not going to do it. Like, yeah, I get like, I get real snippy with like uh, TSA and I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, if they'll be like, sir, could you just stand over here, please? Sir, and please, and I will deliberately not quite stand where they told me to. That's my own fucking rebellion. And, uh, you know, and I just, you know, just full of myself where it's like, Ugh, I know I'm not a terrorist. Why doesn't everybody else know, you know? <laughs> These guys are literally trying to fucking help prevent another 9-11. And I'm, I'm, I'm upset about it. I'm upset by it because enough time has gone by that now I've settled back into me in the universe between my fucking head, my ears, yeah. sorry. We, uh, I think there's just a lot of sadness in people. I think a lot of people are sad and, and angry that life didn't give them what they were promised as a kid. I think we give everyone so much hope. And I think, I think social media has fucked this up is that everyone believes one. I remember one day I was watching uh, Cribs and I was like, I wonder when I'm gonna get a yacht. I wonder what age I'll be when I get a yacht. And I haven't gotten a yacht yet. And by the way, there's no chance I'm getting a yacht. Like, I literally thought you were going to start crying. I, I haven't got a yacht yet. And everybody's saying that I'm privileged. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm still renting a fucking jet ski. <laughs> Where's my private island? Like, I remember thinking at one point I'll probably have a private island. But there is shit. Like, I'll tell you what has really influenced stuff is when, uh, when I was a kid, we moved around a lot. Mm -hmm. And when we moved in someplace, whatever it looked like was how it looked. There wasn't this whole, oh, no, the fridge has to be over here. And I need granite countertops and fucking squirrel fur around the fucking door frame. How, like, you can't move into a house unless it's your MTV Cribs version of it. It seems to be in, like, the, like these fucking makeovers. It was like one makeover house. Uh, a show when I was growing up was called This Old House. Yep. And, Bob yeah, and that guy, you know, he, he, would, he would fix it up. He put a new roof on. He'd stain the floors and it looked good. But he didn't like, he wasn't, as far as I remember, there wasn't that blowing out the floor open door plan and the top floor of your house looks like a fucking nightclub <laughs> with aquarium lights and an infinity pool. I mean, it's fucking, like, um, I've seen, like, you know, I've lived in my place long enough where I've seen, uh, like, there's always that house on the, on, on the block that seems to be the, just the one that's just kind of turning. Like, people yeah. live there for a year or two, a year or two. And every single person who's gone in before they moved in has ripped a bunch of shit out and, and put shit in. And you just think, like, where does that stuff go? Because I've been guilty of it, too. I redid my whole friggin' house. And it's just like, not everything, I mean, a lot of it, the cloth wiring and the fucking galvanized pipe needed to go, but <laughs> there was a lot of shit where it's just like, you know, my parents would have lived with that. So we moved into one house. I remember uh, the master bedroom where my parents lived was, uh, lived, where they, 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 their bedroom. I guess the last person was like a hippie or whatever and wanted to make a look outside. It had this like electric lime green, like Kelly green, uh shag rug it wasn't shag rug but it was like this but it was like the clumps like the cowlicky looking shit yeah and then it had like all these daisy like wallpaper i mean it was fucking hideous it was like something like out of anchorman and i remember my parents being like oh my god we're changing this never changed it <laughs> never changed it and then their all their whole bedroom set was you know my parents are conservative so it was all really like you know, really like the, the wood 
sort of old school garrison colonial looking shit mixed in with this, hey man, like let's end the war sort of. Yeah. It made no sense. So I don't know. 